Dave Knows How. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to tackle a little issue that came about last night. Last night, we had a bad storm come through. And um, before the storm even started really good, all the power went out. And generally around here, the power doesn't stay out for very long. But it stayed out for about five, six hours last night. And finally, I decided I pulled the old gray ghost out, my old SA-250 Lincoln welding machine, which has a small generator. And um, generator is really not big enough to run the, the house or anything, but it is big enough to run the refrigerator and freezer and whatnot and keep food from going bad. So, uh, you know, I drug this thing out from behind the shed and got it fired up, put some fuel in it, fired it up, and she started right up, plugged everything in, no power. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to address the um, the uh, generator portion of this Lincoln SA250 welding machine and see if we cannot fix the generator problem on this machine. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do to get into this thing, this, this part of the machine right here, this generator part, it's for your welding, okay? And you got your welding leads coming up out of there. They go down in there. And this is the part that actually generates the electricity and the amperage to do your welding. This part down here, this is the generator part. And this is what actually produces the 120 and the 240 volt for the generator part of this machine so that when you're out on a job site you need to plug in an angle grinder or something like that you can plug it in and and grind your metal and get it prepped and ready to be welded so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open this up right here so we got a screw here a screw here and then there's two identical screws to this on the opposite side not going to show you those and then you got a screw right up here at the top and that screw's got to come out and then both of these shields, this one will drop down in the bottom and set there, and then this one will rotate around and come out. But before we get into taking these shields off, we got to adjust the battery. So we got the battery sitting right here, and it's kind of it's kind of in a bad spot. If this shield comes down, it's naturally going to short out. So I've got a quick disconnect on this battery, so we're just going to undo this little gizmo here. And um, I put this on here so that I could actually save my battery in the winter time. Uh, just kind of disconnect that and hook the battery charger up right here and just maintain this battery. So once we get that off, a lot of people would go ahead and disconnect the ground first. And that would be a good idea. Disconnect the ground. And if you disconnect the ground, you probably won't have to disconnect this. But for me, it's easier to disconnect the hot wire. And then take a couple of rags and drape over top. And so we're going to put one, two rags over the top. And that should protect that enough that we can go ahead now and take these bolts down and um, get this cover off and, and get on with that. So I'm going to set the camera down because I don't really have a lot of room here to set a tripod so i'm kind of hand holding this thing i'm sorry about all the jerkiness and the uh shaking all around don't mean to make nobody drunk but uh you know working in tight space here so i'm going to come back once we get those screws off and the cover out of the way okay so now that we got the side covers off we can look right here and you can see where my flashlight is shining those two round this right there that's your commentator and right above there you see these wires that are connected that's your brushes and those brushes are your pickup brushes for your 120 and 230 volt outlet that's on the front of the machine so typically what happens when these things stop generating electricity up there it um the commentator is either dirty or the brushes are dirty so what we're going to do to clean these brushes is we're going to we're going to reach up in here with our fingers 
and we're going to gently right on the top of this brush you'll you'll see this wire right here that's hooked up and we don't want to bother that but there's another little wire in between that's uh, it's just a bare piece of copper wire and it's connected to the brush and if you grab a hold to that and very gently pull it up it will raise that brush up off there. I'm going to see if I can get a closer look and we'll see if we can't see that light coming up through that. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on the video or not. We're going to try it and see. And it doesn't, doesn't look like it's showing up too good. But anyway, trust me, you pull that up. Okay. And then we're going to put in in between this disc these two discs and there's two brushes up there we're going to pull both them brushes up and we're going to insert a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and we're going to insert it so that this sanding rough side is up towards the brushes and we're just going to gently work this back and forth I'm going to get this thing set up in here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we got the piece of sandpaper in between the commentator, which is those round discs, and those brushes by just gently pulling those brushes up and then sliding that piece of sandpaper in there. We got the rough surface up, okay, and we're just going to work this back and forth just a little bit. We're going to reach around the back side and we're going to pull it down just a little bit and then we're going to pull it back the other way just like that just a little bit pull it all the way out and you can see uh, a little bit of dirt on there that's actually some of the brush compound okay we're going to take a rag and we're just going to wipe these commentators off now if they're real dirty, you could get some 800 grit sandpaper, and you could just lightly go over that. Um, I don't really like to do it with the 220 because the 220 is a little, a little coarse. But if you just lightly go over that, we can get that cleaned up a little bit. And we're going to try to go all the way around this thing um, the best we can this doesn't really look that bad I can see a lot of copper in there so next thing we're going to do is we're going to fire this thing up and see if that didn't take care of the problem okay so let's get her fired up I'm going to push in a reset button right here okay we'll hold on that thermal start just for a couple seconds it's pretty warm out we probably don't even need it 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. This is enough for this type of weather. Alright, she's all fixed. Super cool. Great. Um, and as you can see, um, you know, once we got that thing going and we put the grinder on there, plugged it up, turned it on, let it run for a few minutes, it actually is kind of cleaning itself up. So, there was probably a little bit of debris between that uh, 
brush and the commentator that was keeping it from coming all the way down and making contact. Alright, we're going to go ahead and try to get this thing put back together. And um, next time, hopefully, <laughs> this thing will work and I won't have to disassemble it. But hey, the power's back on now, so no big deal. Okay, we've got the unit back together now. We've got the shields back on. We've got the battery hooked back up. Everything's good with that. Shields on. We're going to just kind of put this down here out of the way. Like that. And um, we'll go ahead and fire this thing back up and make sure it's still going to produce electricity. Because, you know, we don't know. That may not have been the problem. It may have been another problem. You see, we got wires that come through this cover on the other side and it's very possible that when we pulled this cover off we actually moved a wire and then it started working because we moved a wire and we got a bad wire so we need to go ahead and fire this thing up and try it again just to make sure that took care of the problem I'm not going to preheat this time I'm going to hit the reset button crank it up Seems like it's working good, and that's great, man, because um, this is a kind of pricey machine. I think new this machine was like $10,000. Uh, of course, now, that was back in uh, 1989. That's when this machine was manufactured. I actually wrote down, there's a year right there, 1989, and the serial number on there. Um, actually contacted Lincoln and uh, got all the information got the shop manual got the books and everything else and uh, it's uh it's a good little machine I really don't use it enough to warrant even having it but when I need it it's here and it welds beautifully I mean this thing is uh, basically it's a pipe welding machine uh, they use they used to use these machines a lot on the pipelines for welding the pipelines together. Anyway, appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.